What's going on guys, Ray Shapley, where to live in Austin. So in this video, I really want to dig into dripping springs. I live in the area. I wanted to make a video just for people looking in the area. It's a, it's a booming area. I want you to come in eyes wide open, and understand the city, the, the pros and cons, the good, the bad, and the ugly and all that. So that's what this video is about. <clears throat> I apologize. I'm kind of fighting a cold, so I'm going to be kind of froggy sounding, but if you can bear with me, we'll get, we'll get going. So I got my list here. And I want to start by talking about the pros of dripping, right? And I think a lot of people who are already looking at the area get it. It's beautiful. There's breweries, there's vineyards, there's distilleries. In fact, let me show you something real quick. So let's jump in on a map here. So obviously here's, okay, here's Austin. Here's Dripping Springs. But what I want to show you is that this is kind of our wine country here as we move out towards Fredericksburg, from Dripping Springs to Fredericksburg, this corridor, if you will, it's kind of a stretch, but think about it as our Sonoma or Napa Valley, right? It's our own version. It's not Sonoma. It's not Napa Valley, but it is what it is. This is this is the what's in the making in Texas, and from a you know from where you might want to position yourself long term, think about that. But what's cool about Dripping here is you are kind of at the the entrance to this wine country. So there's a lot of breweries, a lot of vineyards, all that good stuff throughout dripping, but you can also get into it really easily because Fredericksburg is kind of the Mecca. That's like where the, the vast majority of vineyards are and everything on the way. There's fun places to visit on the way, but um, yeah, dripping is kind of the beginning of that. The next thing I'm going to say is that, you know, dripping Springs is a great family community it's just kind of geared towards families um there's all walks of life that live here and are comfortable here but i will say it's very family oriented in that if you have kiddos and you go to a vineyard or brewery or something they're probably going to have playscapes all the restaurants have outdoor things for kids to do there's just in general the 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 town is kind of geared up because that's just the general population they tend to skew more towards the family side and even the larger family side also it's a reasonable commute into downtown so if you're commuting into downtown or southwest parkway where there's um you know chip manufacturers things like that any either of those two areas you're going to do really well living in dripping springs if you're going north this is not the place for you i can just tell you that right now it's going to be rough unless you're doing it like once or twice a week and the thing with dripping is the traffic there's some bottlenecking inside of dripping but there's the main bottleneck is at this place called the wide oak hill here and the the joke in austin is that they're they're fixing it because they've always been fixing it and they've never fixed it but what they're doing now, they took some pretty pretty major action. They are fixing it. So what when this is done, you're not going to bottleneck for 15 minutes at the Wyatt Oak Hill getting into Austin. And you're going to be able, it's basically going to cut the distance time-wise, getting from Dripping Springs into Austin by about 10 minutes, if I had to guess. So it's basically making Dripping Springs that much closer to Austin. My next favorite thing is the fact that it's a dark sky ordinance city. And in fact, I think it's like one of the first cities or the first in Texas to do dark sky ordinance. Very serious about it. I'm a big fan of it. So what it means is, uh, you know, they really limit the number of streetlights there are in neighborhoods, places like that. There aren't a lot. And the idea is to protect the stars at night so that you actually have, you don't have light pollution. You know, I've, I've heard different opinions on this somewhere in one of my comment sections once. Uh, I, I can't remember what they said, but someone was like, oh my God, these people don't even have lights at night. There's no street lights. This is so backwards. I understand it's, it's by design. It's so that you can go out in your backyard with your kiddos and stargaze and there's actually something to look at. So I, I'm a fan of that. Next, it's the people are friendly. They're laid back and in general, people are friendly. They wave at you. They help you. Um, again, I'm generalizing, but that's just been my take. Now, with that being said, it's growing fast. And there's a lot of people from out of state, from different areas moving here. And it's going to change that. It's, it's a sad reality, but I love the fact that people are so friendly here. I don't know how long that lasts. Maybe another 5, 10 years. Maybe forever, but I doubt it. So, anyways, that's, that's a plus. I like how kind of natural and organic dripping springs is. So let me explain this a little bit. There's a vast difference in the way areas of Austin develop. So if you look at North Austin, up around Cedar Park, Leander, those areas, or even down 
south past Buda into Kyle, you look at the way these areas develop, it is just scrape and build, scrape and build. This is how a lot of Texas cities sprawl and develop. And areas like Dripping Springs and Wimberley, for example, they don't develop that way or, or to that degree. I mean, there's, there's, some, there's a bit of it in Dripping. There's a lot less of it in Wimberley. The whole point of all that is just to say in Dripping, things are more spread out. There's more nature around you. Things are greener in terms of just there's green spaces. There's, you know, there's a lot of thought to parks and, and, and breathing room, if you will. And so I really like that about dripping. I suspect it stays there, although, you know, I mean, there, there's definitely developed, but coming with the growth, I like that a lot. Lastly, I, I think it's great for launching like a weekend getaway. So it's your position so well here in dripping that if you want to go to Kerrville, you want to go to Canyon Lake, you want to go to Johnson City for the day. And going to Fredericksburg, any of that, my wife and I, my family, we like to do kind of these weekends where we, we pick a small town that we, we like or we've read about and we go spend a day or two in it. And there's so many around Austin, but this is Dripping Springs is such a good launching point for that kind of activity. I'm not, I'm not just going to do pros and cons, by the way, in this video. I'm also going to do what I would consider to be could go either way. So these are pros to some people and maybe cons to others. There's lots of deer in Dripping Springs. It's nice because there's these beautiful animals running around, but what's not so nice is they hit all the time on the, you know, on the roads. You got to be careful of that. And they eat all your flowers in your front yard. Like it drives my wife crazy. Like the rhododendrons or whatever she grows. They just, she's tried all these things and they just the deer just come demolish it so we can't we can't have anything nice in the front yard and that's that's kind of a big pet peeve for her but i think it's worth it to have just you know driving down the road and you see just groups of deer running around you know the neighborhood i, I like that okay so it's nature this isn't central austin so you would think that's a good thing but keep in mind it also when you're talking about true nature in texas you're talking about snakes scorpions bugs coyotes and these are like real issues. Not that people are getting bit by snakes all the time, but you know, like coyotes, neighborhood ca cats sometimes disappear with coyotes. They're pretty aggressive. People do get stung by scorpions every now and then. It's not deadly, but it hurts a lot. So, you know, there's things like that that you just have to contend with. It's part of living in nature. Number three, it's very fast growing. So, it's, you know, the area is booming. It's one of the fastest growing suburbs of Austin. Depending on how you look at this, this is a good or a bad thing. I mean, if there's not enough for you, there's more coming, that's for sure. But if you're someone who likes it the way it is, it's changing fast. The last thing that I'll say on this could go either way list is there's a shortage of local small businesses. Like I'll give you an example. Recently, my wife wanted to get our carpet steam cleaned in our house. And so I think that the just kind of the knee jerk reaction for most people is like, who can I find around here to give my business to someone who knows, you know, can get here reasonably soon knows the area. So she looked for someone in dripping Springs. She found the oldest store or most well-known recognized carpet cleaning company. They've been around here forever. There was a seven month wait to get our carpets clean. Could she have called up some company in Austin, had them come out here? Sure. But you know, you kind of want to use someone local and there just isn't enough from a business standpoint, local contractors, you know, carpet cleaners, uh, landscapers, things like this to go around. So it can be a bit of an inconvenience if you want to use someone local. However, if you're someone who wants to build a small business or start a business, this is probably one of the best opportunities I think you'll ever find. It is, you know, your timing could not be better to set up a business in this area. You know, obviously do your research and figure out what's in the area and what's not, but as a general rule, you're probably going to do really well. And the, the growth that's set for this area is insane. So that's my last one on that list. Now, let's move to the all-important cons on the list because there are some cons. So the, the first one is the city layout. Let me show you on this map here. Dripping Springs is really laid out. Really think about it from about here. Nettie Brown, all the way to past the city of Dripping Springs, almost to Henley here. That is, the city is laid out and developed along this highway for the most part. Look, it stretches out all over. And the actual city limits are this grade in area here, but where people live is this giant circle around here. But most of your businesses are built out along this corridor of 290. So it means that you're always on this highway 
going to different places. So you spend a lot of time on a highway. It's spread out. Like if you look, we're driving here. Right over there, you've got like a jiu-jitsu academy. There's uh, High Rum, which is a really good rum distillery. Like here's Headwaters neighborhood. If you're looking into Dripping Springs, you'll know about that. Big mixed use development coming in front of that. This is like the hotel, <laughs> the small hotel. Uh, you got Pizza Cave, uh, some other restaurants over in there, dentist, etc. It's all spotted though. Here's part of that kind of mixed use retail that's coming in front of Headwaters. So that's going to be a big deal. I'll talk about that more in this video. Uh, you got pet sitting, vets, things like that. Flores, a real popular Mexican restaurant around here, is right over there. And this is, I'm not going to say it's a dangerous highway, but when there are wrecks on 290, they're bad, typically. Uh, there's two real issues with it. There's no like center divide. So if someone's drunk or, you know, texting or something, they cross over to the other side, that can be really ugly. Also, there's no turn off lane. So if someone in front of you is turning, they're going to hit the brakes pretty quick on the freeway where you're driving or on the highway where you're driving fast. If you're not paying attention, you can, you can rear end them pretty hard. So is it like a death trap highway? No, it's not, like, I would take this over I-35 any day of the week, but it's just something to be aware of and understand that a lot of the businesses are built out along here. So like, if you look here, you've got a new HEB coming in right here. You've got uh Belterra shopping here. There's going to be some more um, infrastructure coming in along dripping Springs. The city of dripping Springs really developed along 290 here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is traffic on the negative. So Got a lot of high. You got the high school, a lot of schools in this area, and when those schools are coming in or getting out, it backs up traffic all through here. So for a small town, you've got a decent sized traffic jam going here in the mornings and afternoons. And the problem is there aren't many roads, and so like little cut through roads yet. They will come as the development comes. These will be built, but right now they don't exist. And so this is, you're really kind of stuck. You can't work around without going like way up into, you know, up to Fitzhugh or something like that. I think ideally the best place to live from a traffic standpoint is up here towards the front, like a Belterra or any of these areas in here, because you don't have to deal with that traffic so much. You've got your own shopping and it's a quick route into Austin. Just my two cents. If you want to avoid traffic, let's talk about another con. And that's the aesthetics the architectural aesthetics stripping springs in my opinion is not a gorgeous city it's just not it you know it doesn't have a town one of these like cute town squares you'll see it has a street called mercer but in general it just the way it was has kind of built out over time it's not the most attractive city it just isn't but i will say what what makes up for that is the fact that it's surrounded by natural beauty. You've got great topography, the hill country. It's beautiful all around it, so I don't think anyone cares. But I will say, when you're driving through the first time, you're pro you might, might not be too impressed. So Dripping Springs is always, or the hill country always has water issues. Dripping Springs definitely is not immune from that. Um, you've got both wastewater issues with these large developments coming in and drinking water issues or the ability to get water from the water tables. So the way it works is in the hill country, you have these water tables underground and, you know, people build a house, and they drill a well into one of these and that's their drinking water. <clears throat> but it takes so many years for the water to filter back through down to those. And what's happening is, is <clears throat> there's too many straws in the cup as, as the area develops out and it's, it's causing water issues. Additionally, you also have wastewater issues, when you build these massive communities, these, you know, bell terras and so on, where, what to do with those wastes, with the wastewater. So just know that Dripping Springs as a city is going to have to deal with this. And there could be some bumps in the road along the way. If you're living in a subdivision, it's probably not going to be an issue for you. The thing to know is if you're living on land, if you're going to buy an acre plus, because most, I don't know if it's most, but a lot of people in Dripping Springs live on land and most of them have wells. If I'm doing it today, I'm, or let's say I'm building on land, I'm going to do rain collection. I think it's the future for the hill country. Uh, if you oversize your tanks, you can go six months without rain. Put that away somewhere. If you're buying on land, look into rain collection. It's going to cost more, but I think it's worth it. The next thing is dripping springs is expensive. You know, the, the average home price is going to be more expensive than Austin. 
And there are some affordable options being built in dripping, but just know if you're comparing it to like Leander, you're going to get less for your money in dripping. I think you make up for it with schools and like natural beauty and things to do and just kind of culture around here. But I, it is a trade off big time. All right. So next on the list of cons is definitely going to be the lack of public transportation. There just is none. There's no public transportation. In fact, there's not even an Uber or Lyft most of the time. All right. Lastly, uh, they kind of roll up the streets at nine. So there's not a lot to do in dripping. Oh man, did I cover the restaurants? I didn't. So I got to cover that next. But after 9 p.m., there's there's very little to do. There's a few places, but it, and it's gonna it's gonna improve. But just in general, know that they kind of you know after dark, after at least after eight or nine, there's not a lot to go do in dripping. All right, let me circle back to restaurants because I haven't talked about that. That's probably one of my biggest problems with dripping is we just don't have very good restaurants here. We have some good a handful of good ones. Very few, like, amazing ones. And, you know, when I was a kid, Austin didn't have very good restaurants. Only about 10 or 15 years ago did we really start getting a good restaurant scene. Now, with that being said, don't tell Austinites this, but Austin can't hold a candle to, like, uh, Houston, Dallas, even San Antonio in terms of restaurants. And Dripping Springs can't hold a candle to Austin. We are just really lacking in in terms of restaurants a lot of people here really wish there were um better restaurant options because it by the time you drive all the way into austin it's a long way to go to just go out to eat now where we make up for that is there's great like vineyards oops there's great like vineyards and breweries breweries are the, the big one for me but being able to go to like a local um brewery and you know the kids hang out you're outside there's usually a barbecue offering of some kind there's beer or they you know some of them have good pizza things like that all that being said i live here i love it i do um if you're looking at dripping springs i want you to at least have kind of a eyes wide open approach where you know exactly what you're getting into if you guys want to talk more about dripping springs give me a call i'm happy to chat with you about it or uh, i'll put my my phone number in the description below, but a good way to reach me is to just book an appointment with me too through Calendly. And that way we have plenty of time to talk. Also, I wanted to tell you that in the description, I'm going to link another video I'm doing, which is really kind of a, a deeper dive into dripping in terms of where are people moving to in dripping and where what's coming to dripping. So if you want to look at that, check out the link in the description. All right, guys, listen, I hope this was helpful. I know it was a bit of a rant. <clears throat> Thanks for dealing with the cold and I will see you on the next one.